welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that all of my groups and links are posted in the description below in case you want to check them out. If you guys have watched any of my more recent tutorials, you will remember that I saved any of the vinyl that was remaining after I applied my template that I was working with. So the sections in between my Starburst tumbler, I would save any pieces that I would cut off from the actual template I would save. And today I'm going to show you guys how I created a tumbler just with the vinyl that I saved from templates that I previously used. This is a great tutorial that shows you guys how you can utilize every part of your pattern vinyl versus having to trash half of it that you are not using with the original template. Everything you see listed here will be covered in today's tutorial, but if you have questions, please just come back and ask and I will answer them. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get started on this tutorial and I hope you guys enjoy. guys so we are going to start with a 20 ounce skinny tumbler that has been spray painted with a flat white spray paint and these are the pieces of vinyl that I saved from my starburst tumbler that I released about a week week and a half ago and this is another piece that I saved from another template that I had so I was planning on doing just another starburst tumbler but then I thought maybe I can wrap this piece along the bottom and then do a half starburst up top. So I cut off this excess and I cut my edge straight just so we would have a straight rectangle to work with. So next, what I'm going to do is take my cup cradle from Brooke over at Cami Page Boutique. If you guys don't have any of her tools, I definitely suggest them. A lot of her tools you can do so many things with. So with this cup cradle, since it is a straight edge, I am just putting my cup right along that cup cradle. And I'm just going to draw a straight line with my pencil. And I only need my straight line on the bottom half since this is where my rectangle wrap is going to go. The top half is not going to be a vinyl wrap. That's where my little starburst pieces are going to go. So I don't need my line all the way up there. And a tip, sometimes I like to put my microfiber cloth in my cup cradle just so the cup cradle does not scratch my spray paint. So I'm just cutting off the excess or just a little piece. And I am wrapping this around. I wrapped it the opposite way that I usually do because there's a little piece of white on the other side. And instead of just cutting it off, I just wrapped it the opposite direction. But we just use this like a hinge, wrap the vinyl around just to make sure that everything lines up correctly. And when we have everything lined up correctly, we're just going to use our little squeegee and we're going to smooth the vinyl down as we roll the backing off. So as we're smoothing down the vinyl, the backing is automatically just coming off of the vinyl. And then we're just going to trim this. And then I'm going to take my straight edge or my blade and we're just going to cut right along there. I typically use a piece of painter's tape as my guide, but since this was such a small section, I felt confident enough that I could just eyeball it. 
So now I was trying to decide what I was going to do with these pieces. So this is when I was getting the idea to do a half burst. These pieces were a little bit shorter than I would have liked them to be just because these were scrap pieces, but when you are kind of designing your own template, you do have to keep in mind what the final product is going to look like. And I knew that all of these pieces were going to be outlined in pinstripes. So I just spaced the point of this first little triangle a little bit up from the rectangle so that once I applied the pinstripes, everything would still be connected together. So you kind of have to see that final product in your mind. And for all of these, I was just matching them up. And you'll see a couple of these pieces were a little hard to get precise. but they were real easy to just remove because I'm not smoothing them down. I'm just kind of placing them on there until I know for sure that they're going to be matched up. And then you can go back and really smooth them down. And I was debating on adding another piece here, but then I kind of decided that I wanted to leave that back part open so I could put a decal there. And this one, I did decide to kind of scoot over a little bit. It wasn't as even as I would have liked it to be. So now I am just smoothing down all of my pieces, make sure that they are attached well. And now we are going to start glittering our different sections. So y'all can see right off the bat how easy that was to just create a new design with your leftover vinyl. So now I've decided on these colors. I'm using Sapphire Martini and Raspberry Ginger Beer. These are two of my favorite colors for 4th of July. I really like the red because it's kind of a vintagey red. It's not bright red. It's not cherry red. It's like a dark, deep red. And Sapphire Martini is actually the sister glitter to our newly released Berry Patriotic. And I was planning to do Liberty as the white, but I decided to switch it to white linen. It was a little bit lighter and cleaner and I think kind of brightened up the other two darker glitters. So we are going to go in with Artistry's glitter glue. I know I use this pretty much for every tutorial, but I promise it is an amazing product. If you guys do not have it, I definitely suggest y'all giving it a try. This has pretty much replaced the epoxy method and applying glitter with clear spray paint for me. So I'm just going in with a layer of glitter glue and then sprinkling on my glitter. And I did decide to do a second coat on this. So I am just drying this section with my heat gun really quick. You only need to dry it for maybe 30 seconds to 60 seconds just to get that glitter glue dry. And then I'm just going in with a second coat 
This one got pretty good coverage, but there are still a few spots where I could still see the white through a little bit. So now we're going to sprinkle our second coat. And I just like doing a second coat. It gives it a great coverage and it just makes the color a little bit more saturated. If this did have a blue base, you probably would only have to do one coat. So it just kind of depends if you want to apply your glitter with color fix paints or paint your section beforehand, or if you just want to do two coats. There are different options you can do. So I am drying this section again with my heat gun. And the reason that I am drying this section is that so when I apply my red, if any of the red glitter accidentally gets on the blue section, it's not going to contaminate that section. That way you can just brush off the red and it's not going to stick to any part of that blue. And we are going to do the same thing with this red. We are just going to dry this section really quick. And then we are going to go in with a, another layer of glitter glue. and then sprinkle our second layer of glitter. And then I'm going to dry these sections again and I'm going to brush it off really well because the next color we're using is a, in the white family, a cream color. And I don't want any of that blue or red mixing with that white. So now I'm just brushing off everything and there were a few sections on here where the stainless was showing through. I think I scratched the paint with my nail. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but I could see it. So instead of going straight in with my glitter glue and sprinkling the white over it, I decided to get some color fix paint out and I'm just going to paint this section one coat with the white. And I honestly probably should have done two coats of this white color fix paint because after this dried and I put the glitter glue on, I could see those striations through the glitter. And I think that was because the glitter was so white. I typically don't work with white glitters and color fix paints. I usually just use glitter glue but instead of doing an extra coat, I just went right in with my 
glitter glue, not thinking that the whole reason why I went in with the color fix paint was to even out that surface. However, I think it kind of worked in the favor of the tumbler because the decal that I was going with was kind of a distressed vintage decal. So it kind of tied in with kind of the distressed look that this glitter, glitter was giving off. So it was kind of like a happy accident, I guess. So we're just sprinkling on the glitter. So when the glitter is first applied, you can't really see any of those striations, which is probably why I didn't really notice it at first. I noticed the striations when it was on my turner getting its first layer of epoxy. And at that point, it was too late to try to remove and add another layer of glitter to try to even that out. So here's what it looks like. I'm going to let this dry, seal it really well, and then we're going to put it on the turner for epoxy. If I would have done a second coat of this white, the striations probably would have been evened out, but I just didn't think about it. So now you guys can kind of see those striations and that glitter. This is after two layers of epoxy, and we are going to clean up those edges. So we are going to use this edging tool also by Cami Page Boutique. I like to heat up my top and bottom rims with hot water and run that blade along the entire bottom. And then that epoxy will just peel right up. So now we have a very straight line along the bottom and then we're going to do the same thing for the top rim. I like to heat up my tumbler with water versus a heat gun. The heat gun just doesn't heat evenly. Some spots get too hot. The water just warms it enough to soften that epoxy just slightly so that that blade can cut through without breaking the seal. I will also say that if you let your tumbler sit for a few days where that epoxy is really cured. This can be more difficult to do. I usually do my rims as soon as I take my tumbler off of the turner. So I'm just peeling off that epoxy and this will cut through the glitter. Sometimes if it has vinyl like this one, you do have to go around that section with the blade a second time just to really get a clean edge on that vinyl that's on there. But for me, this is so much better than trying to use a Dremel or even a sanding block because with a sanding block or a Dremel, Sometimes when you try to go around with vinyl at the top, it can kind of tear that vinyl up and not get a straight edge. Whereas if you're cutting with a blade, it will be straight. So next we're going to take some acetone and we're just going to go around the bottom rim just to get any spray paint off of there. I'm also wiping my bottom of the tumbler where all that spray paint overspray was. And now we're going to go along the top rim. We're just cleaning up any of that spray paint residue. My little acetone bottles came from the Dollar Tree, if y'all are wondering.
And once we have our rims cleaned up, we will be ready to move on to the next step. Now this rim was a little bit larger than I usually do, but I did have to make it a little larger because of the vinyl placement. If you remember that my little triangles were not quite as big as I would have liked them to be. Therefore, I had to make my top rim a little bit larger than I usually do. But we like to have good clean top and bottom rims so that we, when we add our final layers of epoxy, everything is covered, sealed in, all that good stuff. So now that we have our rims cleaned, we are going to start pinstriping. If you guys did not know, I do have a pinstriping file on thedrunkflamingo.com. It has my most popular sizes, which are 0 0.07, 0 0.05, and 0 0.03. When I cut my pinstripes, you guys can see that I like to cut out full sheets of whatever color that I'm using. This one is just regular white and then a chrome um, gold. The reason why I cut out full sheets at a time is just so I have pinstripes on hand when I need them. And also you have options. So if you want to layer your pinstripes, you already have multiple sizes that you can layer. And I learned from the first Starburst tumbler that I did not to layer your pinstripes in the center. If you layer them in the center where they all meet, then it will cause a big bump and you won't be able to epoxy. <laughs> so I am overlapping my pinstripes when I lay them, but then I am going back and I am cutting them right where the pinstripe meets the next line. So you can see here, I am overlapping that pinstripe and of course I applied it to the wrong one. And then I am cutting it right where it meets that other pinstripe so that it is not overlapping. It is not going to add bulk right there in the center. And then I'm cutting this red one, or this outlining red pinstripe, right where it meets the neighboring pinstripe. And I am working on one side and then the next side, kind of like how you do your eyelashes just so I can make sure that the placement is even and it looks the same on both sides. And this red one was not lined up how I wanted it. So I did actually go back and change this one later to make it more even. But it was just kind of bugging me that it wasn't exactly the same. So now that I have all of my white on, I am going in with my gold. And I'm just kind of working in one section at a time. This is sped up a little bit, but I like to line up about an inch and then press it down, line up another inch and press that down.
And I should have put my little microfiber towel in my cup cradle that I'm using because that cup cradle, since it does have hard edges, it did kind of lift that gold vinyl. But I think that was because I was kind of pressing down a little bit. So I did have to go replace one of my vinyl lines. Drea, Andrea Reed, if you guys know her, she got the brilliant idea and put a piece of felt in her cup cradle. And I really need to do that. That way the hard plastic is not scraping against your tumbler or the decals that you have on there. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. And once you have all your pinstripes on, we're just going to go around the edges and trim off those little straggling pieces. And there is still just a tiny piece of vinyl that was up there that I also cut. And now I am cutting the gold pinstripes that are overlapping in the center. And like looking at this video right now, I don't even know why I didn't like this red one. It was just off the tiniest, tiniest bit, but you can't even tell on the video. Y'all, sometimes I think I'm crazy. So I just took it off. It was just off by probably like two millimeters. Don't be like me, don't obsess over <laughs> the tiniest details <laughs> oh and there the puppies are off chasing something so I just went ahead and layered my gold pinstripe on my white pinstripe just so I only had to apply one stripe And now we are cutting that excess off where it looks exactly the same as it did before, you know, such an improvement. So now we're just going to go around our cup, make sure all of our vinyl is trimmed. We don't want any little straggling pieces of vinyl hanging out. We are cutting our vinyl in the back so that the points meet up. I tried cutting this a different way and of course it gave me issues. That's why I should just stick to what I know. And next what we're going to do is apply our decals. I had a couple decals that I wanted to use. I just wasn't sure where I was going to place them, but I ultimately decided to add a little bleach spot here and I added a bleach spot because if I applied the patriotic girl straight to this vinyl she would blend in and you wouldn't re really be able to kind of tell that she was there I guess she would just look like a piece of the vinyl so we added the bleach spot so she would stand out. We are just trimming the edge of the bleach spot that was hanging over the tumbler's edge. And there were just a couple little air bubbles. I did use my heat gun to kind of help it adhere a little bit better. And there were a couple little air bubbles that popped up but I just popped them with a needle. 
and I am just weeding these tiny little pieces that are on here. And I was just going to peel her up and then decided, nope, that's not going to work. So I got my transfer sheet. And I just centered her right in the middle. I knew that her little feet were going to hang off, which I was totally fine with. So we're just going to smooth her on there. And then we're going to trim her little feet. But I think she looks super cute down there. And then we're going to decide on a decal. This is the distress decal that I was talking about earlier so that the back kind of looks distressed it's creamy glitter kind of has a distressed feel so I went with this distressed decal I am lining my transfer tape up with the straight edge of the top half of that vinyl so that I know that my decal is going to be straight which is why I love to use transfer tape that has lines and when I was looking over everything, this is when I noticed that my vinyl was a little messed up because I was rolling it around in that cup cradle, not being careful like I should have been. So we're just going to apply one more gold pinstripe. And then I am also going to take pinstripes and apply them around the top edge and the bottom edge just so it kind of makes everything complete. And after I get all of my pinstripes on, if you guys have watched any of my recent tutorials, I show you guys how I apply the smallest amount of UV resin to the edges of my pinstripes. And this helps hold them down under epoxy so you're not going to get any pinstripes lifting we have all been there and it's so frustrating when everything looks perfect and then your pinstripe lifts under epoxy so uv resin helps to kind of eliminate that issue if you guys want to see a video i will link it now or if you want to just click on one of my two or three more recent videos where I use pinstripes. I do show them in most of my tutorials. I just did not have my light upstairs with me, so I took a break and then forgot to film when I actually applied the UV resin. But once the UV resin cures, I will also seal the rest of the pinstripes with quick seal um, or a different type of liquid sealer if you prefer. I do not seal my pinstripes with a clear spray. A lot of times clear spray such as Rust-Oleum 2 times clear can react with the pinstripes and cause them to lift and curl. And we definitely don't want that to happen but after our sealer has dried, I am going to put this back on my turner for two final layers of epoxy. Make sure everything is smoothed out. And once your final layer of epoxy has cured, your tumbler will be complete. And here are some finished pictures of my tumbler. I think it turned out super cute. It was really fun to kind of create a new design from scrap vinyl that otherwise would have been thrown away. If you guys decide to create a tumbler from your scrap vinyl, please post them in my tutorial group or the Drunk Flamingo Glitter group. I love to see what you guys come up with and what inspires y'all on your tumblers. And I just love these Patriotic Girl vinyl. It's one of my favorite prints that I've made this summer. 
and I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook, my Drunk Flamingo Glitter Group, or our Damn Fancy Tribe. All are linked in the description. Thanks for watching!